name's Eric. As always, I want to thank you for coming by and checking out my video today. On this episode of Smoking, I'm going to show you how to make hearty beef stew. Now, we're still in winter time and I'm dying to get my smokers outside and start smoking some food again. But the temperatures have not been cooperating. Uh, we've been hovering in the low teens all the way to 10, 15 below zero over the last couple weeks. Today we had some snow flurries when uh, my son Kyle and I walked down to j and &E Meats to pick up uh, around four and a half pounds of some chuck roast here for this beef stew. So I'm just doing things inside and I want to have a hearty meal when it's cold outside to fill the house with a delicious aroma and it's going to warm us up from the inside out. Now this is a very basic recipe. Really the hardest part is just taking the time to cut everything up. We're going to saute uh, the meat for a few minutes in a big pot. I'm going to cook this whole thing uh, on the stove very easy. We got some carrots, some celery, some onions, some potatoes. I got some beef stock. We're going to use uh, some red wine to make a kind of rich uh, uh, gravy for the beef stew. Some tomato paste. I got some uh, spices here, garlic, thyme, and rosemary. And I'll show you. Very simple, very basic. So stick around, I'm gonna show you how to do this step by step. Let's get cooking. All right guys, first thing we wanna do here is kinda of brown the beef here. So I got a big, big pot, probably a little bigger than what I need, but I'd rather have more than enough room than not enough. I put a couple tablespoons of olive oil and now I'm going to put this lovely beef in here. This is on medium heat. And we're just going to do this for around five or seven minutes. We just want to get a nice little browning on the beef. So don't walk away too far. We're just going to let them brown, keep stirring it. Just like so. We'll be back shortly. All right, it's been a couple minutes here. We'll give it another stir here. We just want to get a little browning on the beef and we want to kind of get some uh, some of those beefy flavors kind of into the pan so it's going to help us make a delicious uh, broth for our beef stew. Alright, so I'm putting a little bit of kosher salt on here, not a whole lot because we can always add some salt down the line so don't go crazy. And a little bit of ground black pepper. All right, this needs another five minutes or so. We'll be back. All right. It's been around seven minutes. This is perfect. So I turned the heat off. Hope I'm not steaming up the camera. I'm going to remove this meat, put it on a plate. We're just going to set it aside. So let me do that. We'll be back in a second. Okay, I removed all that uh, beef. You can see this delicious... Uh, liquid down here. It's got some meat particles. This is going to start adding some flavor. So I'm heating this back up again on medium high heat. I'm going to uh, just put some dashes of Worcestershire sauce in there just for good measure. Starting to bubble there. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe like a tablespoon. Just like that. It's going to reduce down a little bit. Now I'm going to add the onions, celery, and carrots, we're gonna add that in there. Just like so. And the potatoes. We've got a bunch of potatoes here cut up and cubed. We're gonna throw all this in. And we're just gonna stir it around in this delicious uh, sauce here. We're gonna kinda heat it up. This is only gonna take around five minutes. We just want all this to kinda take on some color. Just like so. And a little bit more of kosher salt. Not a whole lot, like I said. A couple little pinches. And a little bit more of brown black pepper. All right, like I said, stir this. Give it around five minutes. We'll be back in a second. I spent a couple minutes. I stirred it a couple times. Now I'm going to add some minced garlic. And in case I didn't tell you guys, I'll leave all the exact measurements down in the video description. We'll stir that in. 
and we'll just give it another maybe two to three minutes and this is pretty much it we're just gonna pretty much start dumping stuff in bring it up to a simmer and uh, put a lid on it it's gonna cook for around two two and a half hours and dinner is served so we'll be back in a second all right I think we're just about there you know, we're not really trying to cook this. We're just trying to kind of get it to absorb some of that liquid, heat up a little bit. Oh, it's starting to smell really, really good. All right. So it's been around five minutes. And like I said, it's on medium-high heat. Now we're going to add a quarter cup of flour because we need to thicken this up. Because if we don't thicken it up, it's going to be more like a soup, and we want this to be a stew. So now after you throw in that quarter cup of flour, we're going to stir it real good until we can't see any more flour. We want all that flour to kind of just get soaked up, coat those vegetables. All right, I'll continue to do this. Just do this, stir it for maybe a minute or two. And I'm already beginning to see that flour disappear. All right, I think that's good. I don't see any more flour pieces. All right. Now, we're gonna add one cup of red wine. Now, you don't have to use wine. If you don't like wine, just use, a, use beef stock. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stir this medium high heat again. I'm gonna scrape the bottom of the pan here, the pot just to make sure I get all those little things that might be stuck in the bottom to incorporate into this stew. And we want to bring this up to a little bit of simmer. And I'm just going to give this, give this like a minute. We'll be right back. I right, spin around a minute. All right, now I'm gonna add the beef broth. Now I got four cups here. I'm probably only gonna put in around three initially and I'm gonna save a little bit, see if we need to uh, add some later. Three to three and a half. We definitely need enough liquid to cook everything, but we're gonna get some liquid coming out of the meat when we put it back in there. There we go. And now turn up your heat to medium heat because we want to bring this to a simmer. Now we're also going to add, I got some rosemary, thyme, and some tomato paste. I'm going to throw that in there as well. All right, we're going to stir that all in. Kind of get that tomato paste to dissolve. And just another minute till you can't see that tomato paste in there. And then we're going to add that beef back in, and this is pretty much it. I mean, how easy was that? Like I said, the hardest part is just cutting everything up. Man, it's starting to take on some smells now. Woo! All right, we'll just give this like another minute. All right, starting to come to a little bit of a simmer here. I got a medium-high heat. Now I'm going to add all that beef back in there and make sure to get all that uh, all the juice look at all that juice that came out as well Just like so stir that in now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this up to a boil so that's why we're turning it up to medium high heat you know what I'm gonna put the rest of the beef broth in there because it looks like it needs a little more so I put a total of four cups in there look at that we'll give it a minute come to a boil be back in a second. Okay, it's coming to a boil. 
So what I'm going to do now, let me give it one last stir. Make sure nothing's stuck to the bottom of the pot. Nothing is. Try to push everything down so everything's kind of under the liquid. Oh man, it smells wonderful. I'm going to wait till I see it bubbling again, which is just about there. I'm going to put the cover on it. I'm going to now reduce the heat down so it's going to be on a low simmer. And there we go. It is done. We're going to let it go for around two to two and a half hours. Now come back every, you know, half hour or so. Take a look at it. Give it a good stir. But uh, make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. But that's pretty much it. Now you want all those flavors to kind of meld together. You want the meat to kind of cook. You want those vegetables to kind of start to soften and everything to incorporate into that delicious stew that we're going to be enjoying later on. So that's it. I'll meet you guys back in a couple hours. All right, since we got some time to wait for that beef stew, time for a drink review. I'm having an Oktoberfest beer from Point Brewery out of Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Uh, craft brewing using hops and sweet Vienna roasted malts, 4.9% alcohol. And this is my daughter, Ava Grace, and my son, Kyle. Hello. Hey. Ava Grace is having... Now, how do you pronounce it, Ava Grace? Mots. <laughs> Mots. He's saying it's Mots. Mots, 100% juice, apple, mango. No sugar added. Mango? Mango. <laughs> That's what Ava Grace is I'm having. Now. <laughs> he has a Wisconsin accent. <laughs> kind of. And then Kyle's having a root beer. He's never tried. Original Stewart's Fountain Classics root beer. Cold brewed draft. Now, where is this Ooh. made? I never heard of it. It doesn't say. Oh, Texas. Plano, Texas. All right. That's what Kyle's having. All right, guys, make room. Let me open everything here. Wait, what's the thing called? Stewart's Root Beer. Oh, is that why you called the Mots Morts? Well, look at this. It says <laughs> product license used under license of what? Uh, I can't see it. Your finger's over it. Mots. Mots! I think it's the same company. Same company. Gee, isn't that... Isn't that weird? That's a good drink. Oh All right. Gosh. And here's Ava Grace. Except Grace's. this oh, might not be the same brand as Mots when you're drinking. Well, no, it might yeah. be the same company. All of our drinks might be the same company as Mots? No, no, no. no, no Mots doesn't make beer. Oops. Okay. <laughs> they make root beer, not beer. All right. And then I'm having Oktoberfest from. I had a couple of their beers. I bought a uh, variety pack, 12 pack. I remember talking to you once about you saying that root beer was beer. And I'm like, no. <laughs> okay. It's close enough. I guess I'll be. All right. Put your, put your bottle up front so people can see it. I like the color. Smells good. All right, guys. As always, I appreciate you watching the video. Let's cheers. Be careful. It's really full, Ava Grace. Be careful. Yeah, this, I know. This has like a spider web effect at the top. Spider web. Oh, yeah. With the foam. To the viewers, guys. All right, be careful. It's it really, really me, full. The smell reminds yeah, me of Yeah, I know. Stop Ron's reminding me. Okay. All right, guys. Let's give it a sip and look Should at the camera. Tell them what we think. Oh, that's not bad. Mm. Don't drink it all. Nice and easy. Definitely taste the malt. Not very hoppy. But it's good. Okay. Stop. <laughs> what do you think? I say it's very mangoey, like it says right here. Yeah, hence the can name. You, can you taste more apple or more mango? More mango, I say. Really? But I can still taste a bit of apple, but I say this is... Like a really like mango, mango-y drink, apple -y drink. Okay. Because it's mixed together and it's like really good. Oh good. That way. All right, Kyle. It better not be too much grinds of sugar. Yeah. You check that out. What do you think, Kyle? We, you could tell just by how she is after 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well. Total sugar is 27 grams. Oh well, my goodness. That's not like 50 something like the last one he did, Hawaiian Punch. Oh, like yeah. the other one. 
1250 right. something. I All right, think. hang on. And now Kyle, the root beer connoisseur. This reminds me, it smelled a lot like Virgil's and has a bit of a caramel aftertaste, I think. Almost. So is it good? Like a, mm -hmm. It's very good. What the only, only thing I'd say is compared to other root beers, this bottle is really small. <laughs> I think it's the same size. Is well, it it's, it's 12. Okay, it's the same size. It's just normally you it's don't like. Six see, these are both. No, no, they're really both really 12. Big. See, this is 12 too, but it's skinnier and taller. That's all. All right, guys, I'm gonna enjoy the my beer with my children here. And I'm gonna enjoy my empty cup. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's sitting back here, similar in a way that beer again. stew. All right. Like it did this a thousand times. We'll come back, check out it in a little bit, and then we'll uh, be eating it later. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. Uh, see you guys a little bit with empty Cheers. cup. <laughs> Cheers to empty cup, guys. <laughs> All right, we're around 15 minutes away from the two-hour mark. Let's take a look here. Let's give it a good stir. Oh, yeah, look at this. So now is the time to taste it and see if it needs any kind of seasoning. Garlic, salt, pepper. Let me grab a spoon here real quick. A little taste of that uh, flavor. See how salty it is. Mmm. Ooh, I really taste the rosemary. Well, that's good. But it, could, it needs a little bit more salt. So that's why I say hold off on the salt. You can always add a little bit here at the end. Put a little bit more black pepper. We'll stir that in. And yeah, it's pretty much uh, done. We're not quite ready to eat, so I'm gonna let it kinda simmer here. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit, just let it kinda stay warm for the next 20 minutes, half hour. And right before we're ready to serve, I'm gonna pour in some frozen peas. They don't take long. You don't wanna put them in right now. They'll turn to mush. Because they're pretty frozen, but they're so small they heat up very fast. All right, there we go. We'll be back in a little bit. All right, so we're right at the two and a half hour mark. I'm trying to not steam up the camera lens here. Now I'm going to add some frozen peas. I've had them sitting in this bowl for around 20 minutes. Like I said, you want to put these in last because you don't want these to turn to mush. All you need to do at this point is just stir them in real good. And we'll just give them like another five minutes. And this is ready to be served. I mean, look at this. Let me get this. Let's take a look at this stew. Look at that. Man, it looks good. All right. We'll give it around five more minutes and uh, dinner will be served. All right, here we are. Look at this. Oh, man. I'm trying to hold the camera back a little bit here so I don't oh, steam look at up. That. All right, let's scoop out a couple bowls because I am hungry. Oh, man, it looks good. Oh yeah, I mean, it's still cold. We took uh, Dixie out to go to the bathroom. It's like 15 Snow degrees. <laughs> 15 degrees outside, snow and ice everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. This is going to be good. All right. There you go. One more bowl. There you go. Look at this. I mean, what, what other comfort food can you have that's going to be so hearty, so delicious? And this stuff uh, freezes real, real well too. What I like to do is, uh, yeah, put put some in uh, freezer bags, and you can put them in the freezer like that, and then just heat them up. You can heat them up in the sous vide bath, or you can put them in a saucepan. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you got an instant meal when you don't feel like. Uh, that's why I always like cooking a little extra. So there we go. We'll be back in a second. Give us a sample. All right, welcome back. I'm here with my wife, Monica. She scooped Hi. out a couple bowls here. Are you ready? Yeah, this smells so good. All right. 
I'm gonna, it's I'm gonna hot. Pick I'm this, gonna just, I know, I'm gonna pick it up because yeah, I don't want to spill on I'm just gonna do it this way. All right, I'm gonna try to get it's a little really meat hot. and a little potato. You're brave. Actually, let me just try the veggies first. No, I'll do a little of both. I'm gonna do some meat and potato. Yeah, get a little mm. of both. I really taste uh, the rosemary. It's got a nice rosemary twist to it. Mmm. Mmm. And that meat is so tender, mm. isn't it? Mm. Cooking it for a couple hours like that. This is really good. This is good comfort food for a cold night. No, it is. And it is a cold night mm. out here. This is perfect because we're getting over cold. We're both too. getting over cold. You could probably tell with her voice and yeah. mine too. And we both are like blah. This, you know, but yeah, I knew I wanted is, something like this for dinner for sure. This feels really good. No, this is good. Mm. Oh, yeah. This is tasty. Like you I see, mentioned, it's everything. very easy to freeze too. Oh, that's what I heard. And you know what? You well, I don't think we're going to have leftovers to freeze. <laughs> I'm going to be eating this all day tomorrow. <laughs> they have a Grace wants some too. It's very good. But listen, Ooh. the seasonings are perfect. I taste the rosemary, but I like rosemary. Like I told you guys, really the hardest part is just cutting everything up. It's really not that complicated. Mm. Mm. And wow. the meat is so tender. Yeah, thanks to J&E mm. Meats. Uh, once mm. again, providing the meat here, mm -hmm. very good. Thank you, Eric and Jeremy. <laughs> As always, guys, I appreciate you watching my video. If you like mm -hmm. it, please hit the like button. My little logo on the bottom of the screen, if you click that, you'll be able to subscribe to my channel, and then you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. I'd love Do it. it. <laughs> I'd love if you do that. And then a link above and below is to my website, ericsmokingbarbecue.com. And do that. That has all my uh, recipes, as long as well as pictures, uh, descriptions, the whole bit. So It's good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. As always, thanks again for stopping by. We're going to go for now and have a delicious dinner, and hopefully yes. we'll be feeling better after our nice bowl oh, of beef yeah. stew. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. Thanks, guys. Bye. This is good, huh? Oh, my gosh. It's hot. I'm like trying to blow it up, but I'm like, oh, the next bite. It's so good. Very good. Yeah.